Hello, welcome to Knowledge Quest STEM Virtual Summer Camp Experience. I'm Rocket Science Real. I'm Miss Bowden. And today we're going to be talking about wind. So, what is wind? Well, wind is all around us. We can't see it, we can sure feel it. Mm -hmm. Wind is made up of millions and billions of tiny particles. What are particles? Particles are small pieces of matter that make up everything about in life. They make up the wind, they make up you and me, and even the light we see. The air we breathe in is made up of mostly nitrogen, a little bit of oxygen, and just a little bit of argon. Now, the air, the natural air we breathe in is mostly nitrogen, a, a little bit of oxygen, a little bit of argon. Now we breathe this air in every day. Nitrogen, oxygen, and argon are the most abundant particles in the air because this is what we need to breathe. We can't see the air, but we can sure feel it. And that's what we call wind. Wind comes about when we have areas of high air pressure near areas of low air pressure. We use wind for many things today. Ms. Bolden, what are your, some of your favorite uses of wind? Um, my favorite thing that we can use wind with is that we can make electricity up out of it. And we can also use it when we out at sea and the wind pushes our sail and as we flow through the water. I think mine's kites. So with our first activity, we'll be making pinwheels. If you guys do not know what pinwheels are, then just follow me to my activity and I will show you how to make one. Okay, welcome back you guys. We will be making pinwheels. If you guys don't know what pinwheels are, pinwheels are small toys and small in a small activity to determine how wheels work. So first off, you can start off with a piece of construction paper. You will fold it in a triangle shape, just like this. And then with the excess paper, you will cut it off. Once you are done, you see we'll have a crease up in the paper and you will also get the paper, fold it up like this. You see, now you have a diamond shape. So as you begin cutting, you will start off in the middle and go all the way up, but don't go all the way to the middle. Just say about a half inch. And you will do it all the way around. Voila. So our next step, you will get your glue, get a piece of the edge, and take it to the middle. You will take your glue, the bottom of it, the base, and you will just hold it down up in the middle so the glue can dry faster. It should take no more than five seconds. So while that is drying, you can go to your paper that you cut off and cut off a little small circle so you can place it up in the middle just to hold it down when you use a push pin. So it's been five seconds. So now we will glue this, our piece of circuit that we just cut off. Place it down. Get our push pin. Take it through the center of the paper. Get your scrub. And place it right through, through the back. And now you have your own personal push uh, pinwheel. And I will give you a demonstration of how it will turn out. You can find these any type of materials at Walmart or Family Dollars. All you need is glue, some scissors. You can use a scroll or a wooden stick. And you just need some push pins. 
And that's it. I can't wait to see you guys push me. Thanks, Shantanique, for that great activity. For activity two, we, we're having a little more fun. For this activity, you need two straws, a few feathers, and some scissors. So first, with the straws, you'll cut the straws into one half, cut another straw into a quarter, and keep one straw its full length. So you'll have three different straws at three different sizes. And also, when choosing your feathers, choose a variety of feathers. A long fluffy one, a shorter fluffy one, and a longer unfluffy feather. So with this activity, you'll be choosing out the straws and comparing them with each other. Basically, you want to see what straw makes the feather goes the furthest. What straw makes the feather goes the shortest. So with these straws and these feathers, you will put the feather into one end of the straw and you would blow out the other end to see how far did the feather go in comparison to the other straws. Leave your observations in the comments below. Tell us which straw made the feathers go the furthest. What straw made them go the shortest? Leave them in the comments below. Let us know what you think. On to Rocket Science Rail for our next activity. All right, guys, welcome back. We've had some awesome activities today, and I got one more for you. And this was a pretty chill activity that you can take your time with and kind of just enjoy over the week. We're going to be making what I call a wind catcher. So for this activity, you'll need a hole puncher, a paper plate, some construction paper with a few different colors. I have about five. And some wire or cord of some sort. You'll also need something to decorate your plate. I use paint, but you can use crayons, color pencils, or whatever you like. So, the point of this activity is to basically observe the wind. What do you notice about the wind over the week? How it blows, what direction it blows, and how hard and everything else. So what we're gonna do to do that is first cut our plate in half. So after we cut our plate in half, just decorate it. I'll be using my paint. I'm gonna make a rainbow-like decoration. All right, so this is what my finished product looks like. What does your design look like? Pretty cool. So after you have this, you just want to take you a few sheets of construction paper. I have about five colors here. Just cut them all at once, make you some strips. We'll just put a little glue on each end. All right, and from here you should have a product that looks a little like this. Now we're almost done. Now you just want to get a hole puncher, put you one small hole right in the top. Now 
Once you have a hole, take your cord or your string that you got and get enough so that you can hang it from a ceiling or a porch or somewhere outside where you can catch some wind. Once you have the string, go through the hole like so. Just make a small knot. And now you're complete. So once you have your wind catcher, hang it somewhere on your porch or where it can get wind, but stay protected from the rain. So for the time being, I'll just hang my wind catcher right here. But this is the activity I want you guys to try over the week. Make a chart like the one you see and study how the wind moves over the next seven days. Over the week, just take observations. What days does the wind blow a little harder, a little softer? Does the wind ever completely blow your wind catcher away? Take some time and jot down what you see over the week. Let me know how it goes. All right, all in all, I think you had a very successful day. We had a bunch of good activities and we got something to do with mom and dad over the week to just relax and hang out. I want to give a special shout out to Valero Energy for sponsoring us and all their support. And I just can't wait to see you guys again. See you guys later.